Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'm going to talk all about the Frequency Plot, a utility and wireless workbench built to capture short and long-term scans. If you've used Wireless Workbench before, you're probably familiar with the Frequency Coordination tab, and specifically this view up here, which is what we call the Coordination Plot, or a plot view that lets you capture quick scans from your network devices or import them from files for the purposes of frequency coordination. Now, if this is the main interface in Wireless Workbench that you use to interact with scans, that's totally fine. You're probably performing frequency coordination activities. Uh, and for that purpose, this plot is the best. Uh, but there are other reasons that you might want to take a scan. You know, one of the most common reasons uh, that users capture scans for longer periods of time would be to conduct something like a site survey. Basically, if you are in a new venue or you want to categorize the spectrum landscape of a particular place and you want to capture a scan for an hour or four hours or something like that and see how things change over time, you could do it in this view, but there's a better tool in Wireless Workbench, and that's the frequency plot. So I want to talk to you about that today. The frequency plot is a tool accessible here or from the, uh, the view menu. Uh, and when I open it up, you'll see it's a, uh, basically a giant plot just like the one we saw in the coordination view. And we've got these markers displayed here, but what I want to do is dissect this, this tool and show you how to get the most out of it. In a lot of ways, this plot is going to work just the same as the coordination plot, but there are a couple key differences. Where the coordination plot is built to uh, take scan data and convert it into exclusions, basically, to inform the calculator where to put frequencies and where not to put frequencies. The frequency plot view is uh, its totally independent from frequency coordination. Any scans that I capture here or view here will not impact frequency coordination in any way whatsoever. So if you just want to take a scan for experimentation purposes or compare the views of two different scans or however many different scans, this is a great place to do it. Now the interface on the left hand side here gives us a uh, set of controls to do the same sorts of things. If I want to capture a scan, I can do that. Clicking that gear gives me a list of devices and uh, I can pick my devices to scan. But there's one key difference I want to call out in this view and that's a default duration of scans in the frequency plot. By default, scans taken in the frequency plot have this sweep column set to continuous versus in the coordination plot this sweep column is set to single. And what that means is, uh, when a sweep is set to continuous, basically by default when I start capturing scans in this view, it's going to keep scanning until I stop it. Whereas in the coordination plot, having the sweep setting set to uh, single means it'll take one scan with uh, one sweep with each antenna and then stop. Now I can always change this on a device by device or channel by channel basis if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it there and start to show you that uh, similarly to the coordination plot, you see the data unfolds, it looks similar, it's the same engine behind the scenes, uh, except that when we finish this sweep, which we'll get to in a second, uh, you'll see the scan will just keep on trucking. And this is a fantastic default setting if you wanted to do a site survey like I was talking about earlier. So uh, there are a couple, a couple other differences I want to explain while the scan is unfolding in this coordination plot. Obviously the view is a lot bigger. Um, you'll notice there's a time slider on the right hand side which as we collect more and more scans over time you'll see this view becomes uh, enabled so that I can traverse through the different sweeps and see how things change over time. But uh, the other things that are different are these markers that are shown here. These markers actually correspond to devices in the inventory, the actual frequencies that each of those channels are set to. As opposed to, in the, uh, in the frequency coordination view, each of these markers correspond to frequencies that are currently coordinated in my workspace. But these, unless I've just deployed these frequencies, these markers don't necessarily correspond to the actual frequencies in my channels. So this plot view can actually be a nice thing to see where are my channels now compared to the live spectrum data that I'm capturing. Uh, now one thing I do want to call out just now is that we started wrapping around for our second sweep. There you go, and you'll see our uh, time slider has woken up, and our start time and end time are displayed right here. So we'll let this keep running uh, for a second as I uh, continue to explain other things. So these markers, as I mentioned, are literally showing the devices in my inventory, and I can zoom in. Uh, actually, let me talk about the controls here, because there's some cool controls. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm using my, uh, my trackpad with two fingers to scroll in and out, and when I scroll in and out, it actually zooms the plot in and out over where my mouse is, which is pretty cool. 
Um, on a Windows, I think it would work similarly with whatever, whatever your scroll control is. Uh, but also, I'm using a click and drag in the background to scrub left and right. So if I zoom out, you can see I can click and drag to the right to go lower in the frequency range and drag to the left to go higher. And this can be a great way to navigate scan data. The same set of controls works in the coordination plot uh, back here. But if I want to zoom into a particular area, it can be a lot more convenient to use these controls than fussing with this scroll bar. Now, this scroll bar is nice. It gives you a little high-level overview of where there is scan data and where there isn't with this crosshatch. Um, but I really prefer these uh, trackpad controls to zoom in on, let's say, a particular carrier and check out what that is. So, uh, you know, like the coordination plot, I can load scan files into this view. I can import scans uh, from hardware into this view. I can overlay a peak, which is particularly valuable if I've got multiple sweeps and carriers are coming and going. This will show me the loudest signal across all the sweeps. Uh, but there's another feature I want to show you that's kind of uh, handy when you're looking, when you're trying to inspect and see certain things in this particular plot, plot view. Um, there's a lot of show and hide controls I want to talk about. So first off, let's say uh, I don't want to see what channels my devices are. Maybe I haven't done a coordination yet and those markers are annoying to me. If I right click in this header bar where the channel names are displayed, this show menu allows me to turn off device markers and user markers. Device markers are those that correspond to my devices and channels, and user markers are markers that I've actually dropped myself, which you can uh, add a marker, a user marker here, uh, Sam's awesome marker, and then I can show and hide that based on this menu as well, which is kind of nice. There's another feature I want to show you, and that is this Snap Cursor To feature. So I can snap my cursor to either the peak hold of all my scans or uh, the scan taken from channel 1, which is the scan we're taking now. When I do that, you'll see this handy little uh, drop-down guy shows up, and now I can still scroll, I can still navigate in the plot, but let's say I wanted to know this peak right here, what's that frequency of that peak? I can jump right over it and you can see um, my tooltip where my mouse is shows me up. That's at 500 megahertz right on the dot. And it'll even read out the DBM for me right beneath that. So the, the loudest that gets is 90.9, it looks like. Negative 90.9 DBM. So this overlay, the snap cursor tool is a really handy thing. It's also kind of fun just to watch it dance. Uh, but it's a nice way to get frequency and amplitude information for any unknown peaks or even known peaks that you see throughout your spectrum. So I can turn that off the same way I turned it on by just saying snap cursor to and off. And yeah, I mean, this frequency plot view has a couple other tools, you know, zoom in and zoom out uh, controls are here. The start, center, span, and end controls are up top here. But basically think of this as a scan visualization tool that works very similarly to that in the frequency coordination tab, but one that's built a little bit more a purpose built for viewing scans and by default captures scans in a continuous fashion. So I hope this tool was helpful, this tutorial was helpful rather. If you've got questions, comments, or want to see anything else with uh, regards to this tool, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. Thanks.